My dear brothers and sisters, in a very powerful verse in the Quran, a verse that I'm sure many of us have heard many times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ which means that certainly we have created human beings in a constant state of struggle. In other words, in a constant state of difficulty. But before this ayah, in the beginning of Surah Al-Balad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually swears. And when Allah swears in the Qur'an, when Allah swears by His creation, when we hear that, we have to pay attention. Because it means that something very important is about to come. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the beginning of Surah Al-Balad, Allah says, لا أقسم بهذا البلد Allah says, I swear by this city. And the city that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by is a city that is very near and dear to all of our hearts. And that is the city of Mecca. A city that, was, that is beloved to us. And it was beloved to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنْتَ حِلٌّ بِهَذَا الْبَلَدِ Speaking to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is a city from which restrictions were removed for you. It was made halal for you. This is the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Allah says, وَوَالِدٍ وَمَا وَلَدٍ And Allah swears again by every parent and every child and their child. And now Allah has sworn. Well, what is Allah swearing to? Allah swears to لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدٍ And subhanAllah, the beauty of the Arabic, Arabic language here, our scholars say it is as if Allah is emphasizing this point three times or in three different ways. Number one, because Allah swore. Number two, the lam, which is known as lam at tawheed, and the qad. So it's like Allah is saying, I swear, surely, most definitely, mankind, human beings, are created in a state of constant struggle, of constant difficulty. And we hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us something very similar in Surah Al-Inshiqaq where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal insan, innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadahan famulaqi. Allah says, O people, O insan, O person, certainly you have been laboring, you've been working towards your Lord, you've been exerting yourself, and you will exert yourself until you meet your Lord, until you meet the reward for what you have been working towards. And this tells us that Allah is reminding us that the nature of this life is a nature of constant struggle, of constant strife. And you know, subhanAllah, we can look at certain people, and this can be evident to us. We may look at someone and say, you know what, their life is difficult. They're going through difficulty, and we can see that difficulty. And subhanAllah, last month, I had the opportunity to visit Lebanon and visit some of the Syrian refugee camps. And subhanAllah, looking at their lives and looking at how they're living, this ayah becomes clearly evident. I met refugees that have been in those camps for 20 years. You know, when we think of refugee camps, we may think that it's something temporary. Right? They're just there, they're in a camp, right? So they're going to spend a little bit of time in a camp and they're going to move on to somewhere better. But I met families, I met widows, I met orphans who have been in these camps for, for 20 years. And we remember the ayah, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَدْ Certainly we created man in a state, human beings in a state of struggle and strife. But we cannot forget that this ayah is not just referring to those people whose difficulty we see on the outside. Because Allah said, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا insan, We created mankind. This is general for all of us. Not just those whose difficulties are apparent and on the outside. It means every single person in this life will face difficulty, will face struggles, 
will face trials. And like I said, for some people, we can see it. But the reality is that all of us in our lives, sooner or later, we're going to be faced with challenges. And I know sometimes, subhanAllah, it is easy to look at someone's life and to assume that their life is easy. Because you know what? Our measure of happiness or how we measure happiness seems to be fulfilled. Someone has wealth, someone has status, someone has beauty, whatever, however people measure happiness and ease and comfort in this life. And we may assume that this person has no difficulty in, their, in this life. We forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us to be tested, to be tried. The one who created death and life to test you, to see who amongst you is best in their deeds. That is the nature of this life. All of us, every single person, no matter what we may see from the outside, there's one guarantee we have, and that is that every single person will face challenges and difficulties in their life. That is the nature of this dunya. And we may live our lives trying to avoid it and trying to stay away from it, but there's no escaping being challenged and being tried. And subhanAllah, we have people who, are, who have been given the pleasures of this life, and we may think that perhaps they are not being tested. Number one, as I said, it may be just that their tests are in a way that we don't recognize. We don't know what's happening behind this perfect life of theirs that we may see online. We don't know what's happening in their household. We don't know what's happening with them and their children, or with them and their spouse, or their families, or their community. We don't, there's so much we don't know about people's lives. It may be also that the test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a test of what do they do with what Allah has given to them. If Allah has given them, their test is, their struggle is, their strife is, do they do the right thing? You know, some people are struggling to provide for their families and struggling for the necessities, as we mentioned, the refugees and others. But for some people, that's not their struggle. Alhamdulillah, Allah has given them a comfortable life for the most part. They have a good job. They don't fear for the safety of their family and so on and so forth. Their life from the outside, from, from, the, from, from an outside perspective seems to be okay. But their struggle is, because of the ease that Allah has given them, do they do the right thing? Do they live their lives in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do they make shuka? Do they thank Allah for what Allah has given to them? And shuka is not, my brothers and sisters, as some of us think, only, only something that is on our tongues. That we make shukr with our tongues and we say, Alhamdulillah, wa shukru lillah. We thank Allah and that's it. No. Shuka is made by living our lives in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, the one who gave us what we have. And that is why we have the famous statement of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Inna Allah amara al-mu'mineen bima amara bihi al-mursaleen. That Allah has ordered the believers, Allah has instructed the believers with exactly what he instructed the messengers with. Meaning the same message, the same instruction that was given to the messengers is the same instruction that has been given to the rest of the believers. And then the Prophet ﷺ recited the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha rusul kulu min tayyibat O messengers, eat from the goodness that Allah has given to you. But what comes after that? Wa'amalu saliha But do good deeds. And do goodness. So if Allah has blessed you, Allah has given to you, then also be good in your actions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has addressed the believers. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, kulu min al-tayyibati ma razaqnaakum. O believers, eat from the goodness, from the good things, the tayyibat that we have given to you. Enjoy it. Eat from it. And then Allah says, washkuru lillah. 
but make thanks to Allah. Amal al-salih, right? Good deeds. So that the measure of our shukr is how are we living our lives with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. Because sometimes it's, it's easy to get comfortable and say, you know what? Things in my life are going good right now. It must mean that Allah is pleased with me. And that is not necessarily the case. It may be that our lives are good right now as a test. This is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why the companions of the Prophet sallallahu they would fear the test of ease. Because they would say, you know, when you're tested with difficulty, you can recognize, you can see it. I'm going through a difficult time. And that's why, subhanAllah, oftentimes when we're going through difficulty, our spirituality becomes strong. We're going through a hard time, our dua becomes more sincere. Our prayers become longer. We spend more time in sajda. We ask of Allah. And that is a good thing. But the problem is when our lives are going as planned. Because as I said, number one, that's not, that, that is not how life always continues. And are we preparing for the difficult times in the easy times? And this is why the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, if you look at it, it is amazing. You know, there's a really beautiful point we learn in Islamic law, in fiqh. And that is regarding, you know, a very seemingly insignificant point about the life of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. It's about him combing his hair. The Prophet ﷺ would comb his hair. He would make sure his hair ﷺ would look nice. But there were some days where the Prophet ﷺ would not comb his hair. And the scholars looked at this and they said, this shows us that the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, the general sunnah, the way of the Prophet ﷺ is to take care of the way we look. To look nice, to dress nice, and so on and so forth. But it also means that we should be balanced. That our lives are not just all one way. That we prepare for the difficult times. Even when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. Do we try to empathize with those who don't have? That's one of the lessons, by the way, that fasting is supposed to teach us. That we have, right now, we have been given. We can eat, we can drink. And a lot of us, I know we can't even imagine a life where we don't know where our next meal is going to come from. But we don't know the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah protect us. But we don't know. We don't know what tomorrow holds. And if any of you have ever spoken to a homeless person, and you go ask them, is this how you planned your... Did you see yourself being homeless? Not a single person will say, I plan to be homeless. None of them plan to be out on the street. None of them plan to be without a home. But this is the qadr of Allah. This is where they ended up because of what Allah decreed. The question for you and me, my brothers and sisters, is are we prepared for the difficult times? What is going to happen to our heart if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us? Because the flip side of, you know what, my life is good, so it must mean that Allah is pleased with me. The flip side of that is, is what can happen is, when we go through difficulty and hardship, we can have the other distorted view of, my life is not good, it must mean that Allah is displeased with me. There are people who think like that. And that is not necessarily true. Because we know, as the Prophet ﷺ told us, in the al jaza that the greater the test, the greater the reward. And if Allah loves someone, if Allah loves the people, He tries them. Why? To raise them in status. Because when a person is going through difficulty and they are pleased, they are accepting of the decree of Allah, then Allah is pleased with them. You know an example of that? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa We cannot imagine the type of difficulties the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa went through. I know we read about it. I know we hear about it. We read the seerah of the Prophet sallam, his life. And we read how he went through difficulty after difficulty after difficulty. But we can never truly imagine what it was like to go through the difficulties of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa but the Prophet ﷺ was content with the decree of Allah, and so Allah was pleased with the Prophet ﷺ. Likewise, the companions. 
the type of trials that Allah put the companions through, we really can't even imagine. But they did not complain. Not to say that it was easy, it was difficult for them. They're human beings. But, مَنْ رَضِيَ فَلَهُ الرِّضَى The one who is pleased with the decree of Allah, then for them is Allah's pleasure. وَمَنْ سَخِيْتَ فَلَهُ السَّخَطْ مَنْ سَخِيْتَ فَلَهُ السَّخَطْ The one who is displeased with the decree of Allah, then Allah is displeased with them. And that is the test that I'm talking about. What happens? May Allah protect us when we are placed into difficulty because that is the nature of our life. Things may be good today, but what does tomorrow hold? We don't know. Trials don't often come announced. They come unexpected. But part of our spirituality, part of our connection with Allah is to prepare for the tests that come. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from just being displeased with the qadr of Allah. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم أستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وسيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. My dear brothers and sisters, I want to share with you a lesson that I learned from those very refugees that I mentioned in the first khutbah. Because you know what? You can take a look at their lives and have a very pessimistic outlook toward life. Especially when you hear the stories, the individual stories of the strife and the struggle and the difficulties and the hardships that these people are going through. From the outside, we may think, how can a person continue? 20 years I mentioned, 20 years of no relief, 20 years of living in a camp. And these camps, I wish I had the time to really describe the nature of these camps. I, I've just been saying they're, they're unlivable. For our standards, they're unlivable conditions, but people have been living there. And so from the outside, we may think, you know what, how can somebody continue in a life like this? And there may be times in our lives, our brothers and sisters, when we are faced with hardship, and we may think to ourselves, how can I continue? But it is from our spirituality, our connection with Allah, that we continue. And I want to share with you what I learned from these refugees. Number one, I learned to appreciate the goodness that we do have in our lives. And you may once again look at those refugees and say, well, what goodness, what happiness do they have in their lives? I looked at, I saw children who were living difficult lives, but they were smiling. I looked at children, I saw children, I met children who were playing soccer in the refugee camps. And they were laughing and they were joking and they were smiling. Why? Because they appreciate the moments of pleasure, of goodness, of happiness that Allah has given to them. We can look at our lives and we're in difficulty and say, my life is terrible. But what about those moments, those quote unquote small moments? How important are those small moments to us? You know, you can take a look at someone who is very wealthy and you can ask them, how is your life going? How is your relationship with your children? I can tell you as a parent myself, there's no amount of money that someone can offer me in exchange for a moment with my child where my child is happy and I'm happy and we're spending time together. To be able to hug and kiss and love my children, there's no amount of money that could replace that. But the question is, do we appreciate those moments? Do we understand those quote unquote small moments as moments of pleasure? Because we can look back, we can look at our life and say, you know what, my life is difficult and all these things that are happening in my life are difficult. But what about those blessings that Allah has given to us? And this is how the Prophet ﷺ was. I mentioned in the first khutbah how the life of the Prophet ﷺ was immensely difficult. Yet we have statements from the companions saying, I never saw anyone smile more than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How? Why? Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam appreciated those moments. The way the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi was with children. The way he was with his companions. We have narrations, not one, multiple narrations. Where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is joking, he's smiling, he's laughing. Where he shows his love for 
for his wives. He shows his love for children. Can we appreciate those moments that we have? And we have so much. But can we be conscious of those moments? So I hope today we can, we can go home and go back to our lives and, and begin to recognize those quote unquote small moments of happiness in this crazy world that we're living in. And the second lesson that I learned from refugees is that a lot of our happiness comes from helping others. We may not have a lot, or we may have a lot, but our happiness is directly related to what we do with what Allah has given to us. And even now, the science of happiness and studies on happiness, they tell us these very same things. Appreciate, number one, they tell us, appreciate experiences. They tell us if you're going to spend money on, on, on trying to be happy, don't spend money on things, spend money on experiences. Right? Spend money on an experience, something that will bring you lasting happiness versus some product that we buy and we feel happy for a moment and then it's gone. Spend on experiences. Number two, spend on others. This is what the what now studies are telling us, something that we already understand in Islam. That by helping others, by spending on others, we find lasting happiness. So two things I leave myself and you with today. Number one, experiences. Appreciate Allah in those moments that Allah has given to us, those small moments. And number two, Help others. Spend on others with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you.